A stunned and saddened sporting world, it stopped in its tracks with the news that Shane Warne has died at the age of just 52. Good evening. Welcome along in the very saddest of circumstances. The shock could be felt pretty much everywhere throughout the sporting world as the news came through that perhaps the greatest cricketer to ever play the game has gone way too soon and it seems nobody can quite believe it. These were the scenes in Antigua this afternoon as the England test team took in the scale of what they were hearing. We will hear from the England captain Joe Root and a whole array of names all around the game as the tributes pour in. Yes, the sporting world is in real shock tonight. Shane Warne has died. He was undoubtedly one of cricket's greatest. Warne's management released a statement saying he had died of a suspected heart attack in Koh Samui in Thailand at the age of only 52. Well, Warne's impact on the game saw him named as one of the five wisdom cricketers of the century, alongside Sir Donald Bradman, Sir Garfield Sobers, Sir Jack Hobbs and Sir Viv Richards. He retired from the game in 2013. He went on to work as a pundit for Sky Sports, as well as coaching London Spirits in the inaugural edition of the Hundreds. Well, Warren's management, MPC Entertainment, issued this statement just a few short hours ago. They said, it is with great sadness we advise that Shane Keith Warren passed away of a suspected heart attack in Koh Samui, Thailand today. Friday the 4th of March. Shane was found unresponsive in his villa and despite the best efforts of medical staff, he could not be revived. The family requests privacy at this time and will provide further details in due course. Thai police have confirmed they are not treating Warren's death as suspicious. Well, Australia's cricketers are currently playing in Pakistan in a test series for the first time in 24 years. Captain Pat Cummins has been reacting to this dreadful news. Warney was an all-time great, a once-in-a-century type cricketer, and his records will live on forever. Um, we all grew up watching Warney, idolising him. We all had posters on his wall, um, had his earrings. Um, we... We love so much about Warney, um, you know, his showmanship, his charisma, his tactics, the way he, he just willed himself and the team around him to win games for Australia, and probably above all else, his incredible skill as a leg spinner. Uh, so many guys in this team and squad who, uh, you know, still hold him as a hero, their all-time favourite player, and the loss that we're all trying to wrap our heads around is huge. Um, it's been a really tough day, a uh, couple of days for Australian cricket after the passing of Rod. We just wish you know the best to both families, especially Shane's parents and his kids. The game was never the same after Warney emerged and the game will never be the same after his passing. Rest in peace, King. Fine, fine words from Pat Cummins there. Well, the former South Africa captain, Sean Pollock, joins us now to give us more reaction to this sad, sad news. Sean, a very good evening to you. When that news broke just a couple of hours ago, could you quite believe what you were hearing? No, I couldn't. Um, you know, absolutely shocked. Um, immensely sad at the news of hearing what had, had transpired. And it hasn't sunk in, to be honest. And I don't think it's going to sink in for... For quite some time, uh, I think the realization, uh, you know, maybe walking into the Sky Sports commentary box uh, where Shane's supposed to be, will be the real moment of the, the real realization. But uh, yeah, it's I'm devastated for him, obviously, and and for his family. Yeah, understandable as well that denial period when you can't quite believe the reality of what's happened. And you're so right to say it'll take a long time for this to sink in. So many different words are being used to describe this unique character, this vastly talented cricketer, a legend, a one-off, a giant of the game. But I guess in so many ways, Sean, it's impossible to sum this man up, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, there were so many aspects to Shane Warne as well. I mean, the charisma, as everyone's mentioned, you know, his ability. I mean, you just got to admire and respect what he did on the cricket field was just uh, unbelievable. He was a magician um, at the best of times. And, and that's coming from people who suffered at the hands of him for most of our careers. And, you know, it was in many ways on the field, it was always pure theatre. You know, whenever he came into the attack or 
was part and parcel of the game, even with his batting, you know, it was thoroughly entertaining. Um, he was a very passionate individual. Um, you know, he, he was obviously immensely confident in his own ability, um, but, you know, he was full of fun as well. You know, he was always up for, for a joke or always up to have a good time. And when I say about the passion, you know, the passion didn't stop with the cricket. It, obviously, he was very passionate about his family. He was very passionate about the cards, loved his golf. Uh, you know, we had countless hours of discussion his golf. I mean, I can remember him telling me the, the story of, of his hole in one at Augusta, which was like a real highlight for him. Absolutely thoroughly enjoyed that. And um, yeah, he, he was just such a passionate individual. And what he had in spades was that unique combination, I guess, in many ways of this sublime, sublime talent, but mixed in with just being this fierce, fierce competitor. When you combine the two, as we saw so often, and you've already mentioned, he was simply unstoppable. Yeah, he was. I mean, he, he was one of those, those catalyst cricketers, if you want to put it that way. He, he took the game to the, to the next level. Um, you know, the impact that he had in that era that he played was just remarkable. Um, you know, from a guy who was pretty understated when he first came into the setup and not sure what he would achieve to, to have a look at his record once he had completed and, and was finished um, was just a remarkable career. And just the way he went about it as well, you know, um, thoroughly entertaining. And as I say, you know, obviously feared by a lot of the opposition and uh, often ended up on the right side of, of everything he did on that cricket field. Uh, and Sean, what was it like to be out in the middle with him when he was really on song? I mean, my mind and so many minds here in England will be cast back to that final day of the Oval and that incredible Ashes series of 2005. He's doing everything he can to make sure England do not win the Ashes. He tosses the ball up at whatever end he's bowling from with that menacing look in those piercing eyes. And as a viewer back at home, you're nervous about what's going to happen. So goodness knows what the, the batter about to face him is feeling. What, what was he like out in the middle? Because we only see snippets of it we don't hear everything that's going on yeah we wish we had found out a behind the scenes but for us he just was had immense self-belief and was immensely positive um, you know always looking for an angle to to take the game by the scruff of the neck and, and turn it in Australia's favor so you know you, you never felt like you were going to get anything for free from him um, you know he was a fierce competitor as you mentioned it and fought down to the wire so it, it was always difficult and you know, I think that's why we enjoyed our, our battles with him because we knew we were up against one of the best that's ever played the game, that's ever lived and, and, and you knew that you, if you had come out on top against him, you'd done a brilliant job because he wasn't going to give you anything for free. It goes without saying, Sean, that it's so sad that we're even having to have this conversation. But one of the heartwarming things this afternoon has just been hearing lots of different stories for various ex-cricketers and current ones as well about the man, the cricketer. When you try and sum up some of your favourite memories of, of Shane Warne, what would they be? Well, I don't know if there's too many favourites when we played against him. <laughs> um, but uh, obviously, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed my time in the commentary box with him as well. You know, just talking cricket with him, hearing his his different uh, thought processes to the game. You know, he, he would often think about things from a, a sort of left field perspective and was always keen to try something new um, with regards to what the guys could do in the middle. But, uh, I mean, you know, his performances, I mean, there's so many you can go through. Uh, you know, his ability, I, I think that delivery to, to Mark Yatting was the one that would probably take the, the, the cake with regards to the crescendo of, of, of what was something that was going to become really massive and big. Um, but I think just whether it was a shorter format, whether it was the test matches, uh, you always knew that you were going to be up in, in an immense battle against Shane Warne. And I think, you know, he was a, a fantastic individual, um, you know, really generous as well. I think a lot of people got to know that he did a lot of work for foundations. And, and even I think he, he, he auctioned off his test cap um, to help the fires in Sydney not so long ago. So there was many instances where he, he did his, he more than did his part off the field as well. Um, so he's just a great character. I mean, he was a bit of a celebrity as well. Wherever he went, you know, the news tended to follow him. Um, and, you know, the entertainment never stopped. Uh, and just finally, Sean, I, I think one of the things, the many things that Shane Warne taught us as cricketing fans is that, that sport should be fun. It should never be a chore. What kind of legacy does this remarkable cricketer leave? Yeah, he does. Uh, I mean, his, his bowling legacy and, and what he did for the game was immense. So uh, I think that part, I think just the attitude of, he had that attitude that every time he got to the ground, what could be done? How could you win the game from this situation? 
I think that was one of his, his greatest attributes. Uh, you know, he never gave up and, and he always thought there was a chance and he, he was always looking for that opportunity to try and turn the game on its head. Sean, he was a fierce competitor that you faced many times, but of course today, like so many, you've lost a friend as well. Never easy to talk about this, but you've done it brilliantly. Thanks so much for joining us on what is a difficult day for the world of cricket. We appreciate it. Sure, and our thoughts, obviously, with his family. Absolutely. Thanks ever so much, Sean. Well, the England captain, Joe Root, is in Tigo right now, and he took time out to pay tribute to a man he told us was a massive idol of his when he was growing up. It's hard to know what to say, really. And my experiences of Shane was someone that absolutely loved the game of cricket. It was always a joy to be around, gave so much energy to the sport, and, and obviously, as a kid growing up, was a massive idol of mine. Someone he wanted to emulate uh, the way he could win a game on his own. His, his skill level is incredible, but um, to have the opportunity to, to spend some time with him, get to know him a little bit, um, albeit not a lot, you know, it's, it's deeply saddening to, to hear the news this morning. Did he influence your career in any way? Well, certainly as a young kid watching him play. Uh, I'd been 14 when that 2005 Ashes was, was on, so in many ways that was, you know, that series was a, a massive influence on my career. And, um, you know, the way he sort of captured the, the nation along with the whole of that series, but his phenomenal performances throughout were, you know, that, that they're the sort of things that make you want to get into the game and play it and, and play at the highest level. Um, and you could see his, his joy and enthusiasm when he played, but it's still there, like when you got to, to speak to him, even as a, a player now, great to ch chat to about the game, very knowledgeable. Um, just just wanted to see the game played at the at the peak of its powers and um, uh, yeah it's just really sad and a lot, what a lot of people say he got that balance between competitive edge and then sportsmanship right too is, is that something you agree with well from watching on the sidelines definitely you know I never got a chance to play against him but um, you anyone that you speak to within the game that played against him said that you know how formidable he was to play against not just with his skill but how he played the game but at the same time, you know, did it in the right way, um, and he was a big advocate of that when he, you know, when he spoke about the game and commentated about the game as well. So, you know, I, my opinion, I would say so. Yeah. The, the dressing room. Can you just give us an idea of the mood in there and how that, it impacted everyone? Well, just really shocked, you know, and, and really sad to to hear such a legend of the game pass so suddenly. It's been a, you know, a week of it really, hasn't it? So. Um, difficult one for, for everyone involved you know a huge amount of respect for him and as I say just condolences to his, his loved ones and his you know his family and friends thanks Joe thank you so where, where were you when you found out you'd arrived at the ground when this news broke did you all sort of find out as a team yeah we, we were we just started the game um, and it sort of filtered through the dressing room and um, yeah as I say it's been quite a quiet dressing room this morning off the back of it it's, it's um, hit everyone quite quite hard if I'm being brutally honest yeah and I think I think his sort of legacy as a cricketer is fairly established but any specific personal memories do you do look you ever faced him even in a, a knockabout kind of way did you ever get a chance to stand 22 yards away from him no I, I didn't get a chance to play against him um not even in practice but I did get a chance to sit down and you know and talk cricket with him and I'll fondly remember that um a couple of occasions where we had two or three hours and his energy for the game his love and passion for the sport, um, and just you know wanting to see it played at the at the absolute peak of its powers is it was evident to see. You know he just he really loved the game of cricket, um, and he was great fun to be around. I'll be honest, every time I spent time with that for he was he was great fun. So deeply saddened to to hear this news today. While well, James Cole was putting the questions there to Joe Root, he joins us live now from Antigua. James, uh, a very good afternoon to you. Um, you could really see, understandably, how much this had affected Joe Root as he absorbed the news that's only been out there for just over a couple of hours. Sum up the mood out there for us at the moment and what the general reaction has been to Warren's untimely death from the ECB. Yeah, shock. Simon, sadness and disbelief, I think, for a lot of people. It still hasn't sunk in. It still doesn't feel real to lose Shane Warne, aged just 52. It seemed that Warne had so much more to give uh, in all aspects of his life. A huge character, 
Uh, we saw the players, they took a minute's silence when they learnt of the news. The game here just got underway, but they came off for a rain break and then they observed a minute's silence and you could see the emotion in a number of the players uh, having just learnt this news. As a lot of them will know Shane Warne through various different avenues. Uh, ben Stokes in particular will have played him with him in the IPL, uh, with the Rajasthan Royals, where Warren was his coach. Uh, he also coached in the 100 Shane Warren, so they would have crossed paths there too. Paul Collin would remember, the interim head coach, uh, played against him in the 2006-07 series. And, and he was a man, Shane Warren, who left his mark, wasn't he? A, a, a real great of the game. The ECB tweeting this afternoon, one of the greatest of all time, a legend, a genius, you changed cricket. R.I.P. Shane Warne, and that is very much the feeling here. We heard from Joe Root there saying he watched him growing up. He inspired young players, young spinners. Spinning wasn't cool at the time when Shane Warne was a spinner. He came along with his bleach blonde hair and his, and his uh, surfboard and look and his earring, and he made spin bowling cool. He, he transformed the art, and since retiring he's been a pundit with Sky Sports he's been a superb pundit because he has a superb cricket brain he had a superb cricket brain he was a superb analyzer of the game and a lot of people describe him as the greatest Australian captain that never was because of his off the field misdemeanors because of his naughty boy uh, uh, reputation he was never given the Australian captaincy James, beautifully summed up. Thanks ever so much. So many tributes have been paid to Shane Warne throughout the last couple of hours. This one from Ben Stokes. It was an honour to know you and work with you. This man is a legend. Ben Stokes reacting a short time ago to the sad news that Shane Warne has passed away at the age of just 52. And we'll have plenty more reaction after the break.